Hello there, Melissa and Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. Today, for the second part on our series on Angelo Vigiani's perfect scamo, his perfect defense, perfect offense, the perfect play is everything today is about. So, one last addition to last week's video on Vijani, where we talked about the best attack to throw, like we could throw Mandriti, Reversi or thrusts, and Vijani clearly prefers the thrust, but at the second place there's the Reverso instead of a cut from the dominant side, which is quite interesting. But of course he makes an addition later, which is really, really interesting, and that is to watch the opponent's sword more than their openings. So while we are looking for openings of our opponents to attack, we should always regard that sword, therefore only taking openings that we can then cover ourselves and only strike when that leaves us safe, which is quite a compelling argument, I think. Okay, so today it's all about the perfect play, which just consists out of two to three watts, um, how you count it basically, and which is really awesome because he in great detail describes you the body mechanics of this perfect play. Okay, so how do we start? Well, he says it's a play in one tempo, so one motion, and after all we want to get every all these motions together into one flow. But actually, I found it most useful to teach us in three basic movements. And the first one starts from our second guard, the Guardia Seconda Alta, because the hand is high, Offensiva because it's on the right side, and Perfetta because the sword's uh, pointing towards the opponent. So Melissa will do this towards you, and I'll do it in, in profile. Your right shoulder gets back as far as possible, your right foot is in front, you're on the heel of your back foot and the weight is more or less on the back foot to leave the front foot free to move as Vijani describes it. Okay, so from here we thrust his most perfect attack and that is the Ponta Sopramano or an Imbrocata, an overhand thrust towards the opponent. And while we do that, we take a really big step. So that's basically the first time we get a lunge in an Italian system in the mid 16th century. Okay, so we do our thrust and while we do this, our left hand, which starts at the right breast, goes behind us and low. From here, as we are fully extended, our hand turns into basically guardi di faccia, so our true edge is at the end facing towards the left, and from here we recover into what is basically porta di ferro larga. So for Vigiani this would be the second guard, and then recover into the fourth one. Okay, and while you recover, you thrust, and you recover, you raise your hand. So with your, just your hands, basically, it's from here extending both hands and then recovering them, okay? So it's extension and then a recover down low. And then for the last part, we will get into our original position because from here, from this fourth guard, we are now striking a rovescio that is almost tondo, but actually the way he describes it, it is a horizontal cut because we turn the fourth edge of our sword towards our left shoulder and raise the hand. And from here, with a turn of the body, we rotate our back foot on its heel and get into that horizontal motion. And he really describes that the point is not higher than the pommel, the true edge is not higher than the false edge, so it really has to be a horizontal cut, and he also described that the flat's pointing towards the sky. And then from there, we raise the true edge once again, and we get back into this basic play. So it's three motions. Look at the feet. We start on the balls of the foot, then we let the 
left heel follow our right foot. So we basically stand here in profile, then recover, still in profile. We raise the sword and back again. So both our feet are pointing forward. Okay, once more. And this rovesh tondo, this defensive blow is struck close to our body. Okay, and that is to make contact with an opponent's blow with the strong of our blade. We don't want to extend, we don't want to give them leverage over our arms, but we really want to make this tight and from there extend back to the opponent. And Mijani goes on a big tangent that his pupil, his student, Conte would take months to learn this motion with great agility. But really, it's like always a matter of practice. Okay, so let's put this a bit into actual practice. How does it look against an opponent? So there are two basic ways to apply this. So for example, if Melissa stands in a guard, not unlike Cola Longa Estreta, so I have an opponent's sword to my inside and I stand in my most perfect offensive guard and that blade is pointing towards me. I can, of course, thrust my most perfect blow, but that leaves me kind of uncovered against that point. So what I want to do is to turn, turn my blade at the last moment, therefore presenting opposition to that blade. And from here, I want to clear that blade while getting again out of way. So get a bit closer. Yeah, a bit more profile and like here. Yep, so I get in here, get into that Ponta Supramano, travel into basically Porta di Ferro Larga or Guardia Quarte, Larga, uh, Defensiva Imperfetta, so you don't have to bother with that anymore. And then from here, we get into our basic position. If that thrust don't land, doesn't land, we could use this whole action as a provocation. So for example, I go here, I'm here, and now there's something coming towards me. I can still use that Rovesh Tondo as a great defensive blow to then again strike my perfect offense. Okay, and there's one difference with this play because now I'm using his perfect scammer not offensively but defensively and that is from here and there comes the attack I still leave after I thrust here I leave my blade in opposition so I don't make that turn into Guardi di Faccia but I end in basically his seventh guard which is Guardia Settima uh, offensiva stretta e perfetta. So it's on the right side, it's pointing towards my opponent and it's for the close play. Okay, so these are the two basic principles. From here, either I get directly into opposition, I retreat and maybe there comes something after that. I make my horizontal blow and from here I can start right again, but I leave my blade in opposition. While Angelo Vigiani claims that his play is unique, the essence, parrying by a reverso and following it up with an overhand thrust, so an imbroccata, can be found in many historical sources, starting with Fiore de Liberi, Giovanni della Gocchia, and also in later sources like Salvatore Fabris. Okay. One last thing about the body mechanics, and that is that he also describes that at the end of this blow, your right shoulder is lower than your left. So this implies a little forward lean and back here as well. So he really goes into great detail about these body mechanics. Okay, so I hope this made this perfect play a bit more clear. Next time we'll go into uh, the tactics and until then, see you then, ciao.